Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of It's News to Me. I'm your host, Sophie Shamrzadi. This week we'll be highlighting important events happening right here in our community. The Batavia Park District plans to demolish the vacant house it owns at 27 North Prairie Street, along with another empty home located at 13 North Prairie Street, to clear the way for an expansion of the East Side Community Center parking lot. The proposal cleared a hurdle December 11th before the Batavia Historic Preservation Commission. More parking spaces are needed to accommodate visitors, visitors to a community center that is booming. There are about 4,000 visits by people to the center each month. The parking lot has 90 spaces, short of the 100 121 required by the zoning code. By tearing down the vacant century old houses and their detached garages, the park district will be able to improve and expand the parking lot to 134 spaces. A 74-year-old St. Charles man was able to walk away without injury after crashing his home-built plane in the Plato Township. David Weaver of St. Charles attempted to land his Pulsar 912 XP experimental home-built airplane at around 5 p.m. Saturday at Olsen Airport in the Plato in the Plato Township. The plane crashed through a wooden fence surrounded a, by a horse pasture and came to rest on Spelly in the pasture, southeast of the landing strip. Weaver, who was the sole occupant of the plane, was uninjured. Now let's go to the park bench. Hello, I'm Sharon Bringelson, Marketing and Communications Coordinator at the Park District, and welcome to the park bench. I'm bringing you Park District news today from the East Side Community Center. As you can see on the walls here, our preschool classes have been busy with all sorts of seasonal lessons. Our guest today is Lori Musilak, a teacher here at New Horizons Preschool. Welcome, Lori. Tell us a little bit about your role here at the preschool. Thanks, Sharon. I'm one of the teachers here at New Horizons. This year I'm teaching in the four-year-old and pre-K programs. It's hard for me to believe, but this is my 11th year at New Horizons. Wow, congratulations. That's wonderful. I hear you have an open house coming up. We do. Uh, we're very proud of our preschool program and this event is a chance for us to show it off to prospective families. It's coming up on Tuesday, January 23rd, beginning at 6 p.m. It's a great opportunity to see the classrooms, meet the teachers, and learn more about our play-based preschool program. Good to know. May children attend with their parents? Oh, absolutely. Children are welcome to attend. It's a chance for them to see the school and also to explore the classrooms themselves. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us, Lori. With the days being colder and darker this time of year, you may be looking for some fun things to do. Check out the Winter Fun Guide for lots of programs and activities. Our recreation supervisors are doing a terrific job of adding new and different classes for people of all ages. In particular, take a look at our greatly expanded active adults section. Pick one that sounds interesting and branch out to try something new this season. If you need a last minute gift idea that is the perfect fit for anyone on your list, give a Park District gift card. We have something for everyone. Stop by the Civic Center or Eastside Community Center to get yours today. The Park District is pleased to announce that we were again named as one of Chicago Tribune's top workplaces in 2017. Batavia Park District was number 12 of 125 recognized businesses. Companies were selected by employee surveys conducted by a company called Workplace Dynamics, which measured key qualities such as leadership, communication, career opportunities, working environment, managerial skills, and benefits. We are incredibly proud of all our seasonal, part-time, and full-time staff, as well as the leadership of our park board. If you're interested in joining our team, you can check out job opportunities at bataviaparks.org. Just a friendly reminder that the park district offices will be closed Monday and Tuesday, December 25th to 26th, in observation of the Christmas holiday. We will also be open from 8.30 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Wednesday through Friday, December 27th to 29th, and closed Monday, January 1st in observation of the New Year holiday. On behalf of the Park District, we hope everyone has a wonderful holiday season. We'll see you next year. 
there was a bank robbery in Batavia Tuesday afternoon, causing a brief lockdown at Batavia High School. The FBI has responded to a call that the old second bank at 1991 West Wilson was robbed and have a suspect in custody. Police in Batavia began the investigation into the robbery shortly after 2 p.m. The high school was placed on lockdown for around 20 minutes as a search was on for a suspect in the area. The police were searching for the suspect at Menard's store on Route 47 in the Yorkville area. Greg Zanis, a former Sugar Grove resident who now resides in Aurora, recently received an award for his Crosses for Losses campaign. Grieving over the loss of his father-in-law for more than 20 years inspired Zanis to use his God-given talents to help others grieve with his handmade crosses. Zanis joined a support group for families and friends of murder victims after he found his father-in-law murdered in Aurora in 1996. At one of the group's meetings, Zanis met a mother whose six-year-old son Nico was killed. The mother knew that Zanis was a carpenter and asked asked him if he would make a cross for her to remember her son. He agreed and the first of his crosses was created. Since then, Zanis has created more than 22,000 other crosses as part of a Crosses for Losses campaign, his nonprofit organization, offering mourners a place to go and share their grief and remember their lost loved ones. Now let's check it out with Michelle Martzell. Hello, I'm Michelle Martzell, Promotional Services Manager here at the Batavia Public Library. The library's December Sundays on Stage program will be presented on December 10th at 2 p.m. rather than the last Sunday of the month. The program, Christmas Music in the Movies, features clips from your favorite holiday movies, including White Christmas and Holiday Inn, and from one of Jack Benny's hilarious holiday specials. The program is presented by Steve Frenzel of Marquee Film Talks. Please register for this program online or by calling the reference desk. Sundays on Stage is sponsored by the Batavia Public Library Foundation. Please join us for the next New Lyceum Lecture on Monday, December 11th at 7 p.m. when Thomas Madison Armstrong III recounts his experience as a freedom rider during the, the early 1960s. Armstrong, now a civics education consultant, was among the first protesters in Mississippi demonstrating for voting rights and equal public accommodations. Please register for Civil Rights Freedom Rider online or by calling the reference desk. The New Lyceum Lecture Series is sponsored by the Batavia Public Library Foundation. The library has a number of activities for children scheduled during the school district's winter break. Please check the library's online calendar for information on these programs. The library will be closed all day on December 24th, December 25th, December 31st, and January 1st. I'm Michelle Martzell and I hope your holidays are merry and bright. The Batavia Park District listed several new job openings this week, and volunteers are also being sought. These are the new job openings as of December 13th, 2017. More can be found about each job via the Park District website. The job listings include trades technician, field and gym attendant, assistant birthday party coordinator, director of community recreation, and kids club program counselor. If you're looking for some of the best light displays in King County, six of the greatest shows are right here in our area. First of them is the Festival of Lights at Phillips Park in Aurora. It is one of the largest free outdoor holiday light displays in the Chicago area. It opened November 24th at Aurora's Phillips Park, 1000 Ray Moses Drive. Another light display is a Lenertz Avenue in Aurora Holiday Lights Show. This drive through display includes lights, sound, and all the holiday characters, all lighted and all for free. Patrons can enter Lenoutz Avenue via Sheridan Street, follow through Lenoutz Circle, and exit via Ohio Street. There is also the Moose Heart Holiday Lights display through December 31st, a 2.3-mile drive through light display. Depending on the flow of traffic, the drive takes about 15 to 20 minutes. The cost of admission is $10 per car, and all proceeds will go towards providing high-quality residential care and academic slash vocational training for the children of Moose Heart. The Larson's Light Show 2017 promises to be more spectacular than ever. The house at 42 West 891 Beth Road in Campton Hills is a 2013 winner of the Great Christmas Light Fright television show. 
Viewers are asked to tune their radios to 88.5 FM and enjoy the show. All traffic must enter, enter from Anderson Road from Illinois Route 38 or Illinois Route 64. No traffic is allowed westbound on the Beath Road. The show is ongoing and will fluctuate from 25 minutes to 15 minutes, depending on amount of traffic. The show runs from 5 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday and from 5 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Friday through Sunday through January 1st. At Blackberry Farm, more than 60,000 Christmas lights, three and a half miles worth, will light up the Pioneer Village with shooting stars flashing above Blackberry Creek and holiday cartoon characters gracing the tour of Lake Gregory. Tickets are available online at foxvalleyparkdistrict.org and the Blackberry Farm Facebook events page. Last but certainly not least is a Christmas light spectacular on Bourbon Street at Pheasant Run Resorts, computerized show which includes more than 20,000 pixel lights. The display will be up through the holiday season. The light show runs every half hour from 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. daily. Now let's go to fitness around town. Welcome to another segment of Fitness Around Town. I'm Jan Silverman, owner of Geneva Fit in Geneva. I'm often asked, what's the best fitness activity? My answer is always the same. It's that activity that you enjoy and will do consistently. Everybody needs a certain amount of resistance training. Everybody needs a certain amount of cardiovascular work, but we also need to have fun. So I've made it my mission to find those activities that anybody can participate in. Whether you are new to fitness or you want to try a new activity or you just want to revisit an activity that you loved in high school. I'd love to help you find your sport through this BATV series. Today, I'm with Pete Pope, superintendent of Villa Olivia in Bartlett. Thank you, Pete, for being with us today. Villa Olivia has been around for quite some time. However, I understand that it was fairly recently purchased by the Bartlett Park District. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of Villa Olivia? Sure, that's correct. Villa Olivia has been around for many, many decades. Um, it was always a public facility, but was owned privately by a family. Um, the Park District purchased it in December of 2010 and we've done, made a lot of renovations and improvements to the facility during that time. And so we've been operating for the last six and a half years, operating a golf course, a ski hill, and a banquet facility. Great. So the cold weather is here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what types of winter activities are offered at Villa Olivia? Sure. Um, we offer um, skiing and snowboarding, uh, really from a very beginner or novice area to a more advanced skill level. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But also we offer tubing, downhill uh, family-based tubing. We have um, a great hill, very popular activity. It doesn't require the skill that skiing or snowboarding requires. So families come out, any uh, children age four and above can participate up through seniors and we provide tubes and you ride the hill and we have a magic carpet which is like a moving sidewalk that brings you back up the hill so you don't have to climb the hill each time between your rides. That sounds like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So I am new to winter sports. Um, I've never been skiing. As a matter of fact, I just tried snow snowshoeing last year for the first time with some other ladies from the gym. Mm -hmm. um, what types of activities would you suggest for me with my first visit there? Sure. Um, so uh, we have all types of runs at the facility from very beginner, like I said. So we offer skiing and snowboarding and um, beginner slopes through more intermediate and then even have a terrain park which is an area of the facility that has rails and jumps and boxes that the snowboarders use like you would see doing tricks like you would see at the Olympics. So we have great lesson programs. I think we'll talk a little bit more about that but um, we, we would really suggest if you've never skied before we offer private lessons and semi-private lessons. We have walk-up lessons where you don't have to make plans in advance. Okay. And we also have structured programs for youth. Uh, we have a program called Snow Kids that is a three session class um, that you would pre-register for, pre-register your children for. That's very, very um, good program with good results in teaching beginners to ski and snowboard. 
Sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, so how many ski and tubing runs does Villa Olivia have? Are there lifts? Well, you mentioned the magic carpet. Mm -hmm. um, there, are lifts are, there are lifts as well? Sure. Uh, so we have seven runs at the facility. Um, four of those really kind of are the beginner uh, hills where we do a lot of the teaching or um, in, we do the teaching. And then we have three other runs that are more significant. Um, one is served by our chairlift. Uh, we have a four-person, it's called a quad chairlift. The, the height of that um, hill is about 125 feet or 12 stories high. So our hill is artificial, it was built. It's about 12 stories high and about 10 football fields long. So that's our chairlift run. And then we have two more advanced uh, areas um, for skiers and snowboard. And again, one of those has a lot of really neat features with rails and jumps built out of snow um, that, that the snowboarders use quite extensively. It sounds like there's a lot of options. Yeah, and then the tubing hill is kind of on the back side of that um, hill okay. that we have. And we have three lanes, two single lanes and a big wide lane where you can group together with two or three other tubes and go down as a family or a group of friends in the tubes. Um, so we have the chairlift. The other hills are served by a tow rope. It's a rolling rope that you mm -hmm. grab onto and it pulls you to the top of the hill. You do your run and then you take the rope tow back up. So it's a combination a chairlift, rope toes, and this really cool magic carpet on the tubing hill. Very nice, a lot of options. Mm -hmm. So speaking of your artificial hill, mm -hmm. I hear that you also make artificial snow. Can right. you tell me a little bit about how that works? Sure, um, so we do make our own snow. It is natural snow. It's um, simply water that is frozen. Um, we wait for uh, the weather here in Chicagoland to get cold enough for us to start making. So we have some wells on the property and we fill large ponds and then we have a pump system that draws water out of those ponds and we pump it at very high pressure through these machines, snow making machines and it blows the water into the air and it crystallizes and it falls uh, to the ground as snow we make these very large piles, piles as big as houses all over the, the property. And then we have these big machines, kind of like bulldozers that push all that snow around. And then we till it on the back of those snow cats or piston bully machines. There's tillers that create that really cool, smooth, soft corduroy texture that you're used to seeing on a, on a ski hill. So from beginning to end, we make it, um, we make the snow and groom it so that it's good and safe and very skiable for, for our guests. So do you just make snow only when there isn't snow that's fallen or is this something that you do all the time? We love natural snow too okay. or re, uh, snow that's fallen from the sky. Uh, really in Chicagoland we can't rely on that though. So what's important to us is temperatures that are cold enough for us to make snow. We love the natural snow on top of it and that's kind of a marketing thing. When you see it in your backyard or you know that we're getting natural snow you say let's go ski or tube. Mm -hmm. um, but we build the hill without any natural snow if we need to. Okay, and do you suggest that people call ahead? Um, not necessarily, not um, for skiing or snowboarding. Certainly for some of those lesson programs, you could call ahead to our facility or check our website. We're constantly um, doing updates and condition reports on our website. Um, the tubing activity on the weekends is very uh, popular amongst families. So. Um, we don't take reservations for that, but you may come to the facility and be told that there's a short wait list and we, we maintain a list and we allow you to hang out in our ski cafeteria or our bar area and we'll call out when your party is ready. So you do have a cafe and mm -hmm. a bar? Yes. Okay. Um, so we convert one of our banquet rooms at Villa Olivia um, to a ski cafeteria during the winter season and we do all the quick serve concession type food like pizzas and burgers and hot dogs and nachos and hot chocolate. Okay. Um, so very family friendly in that uh, facility but we do have a full service bar in the facility too so if mom and dad come out to ski or they're there with their children who are skiing they can certainly come out and uh, have an adult beverage if they'd like as well. Okay great now do I need to bring my own equipment? Do you have rentals? How does that work? Sure uh, we do have rental equipment available um, you, you can bring your own equipment and um, or we have rental equipment available all sizes from very young through adult um, both skiing and snowboarding equipment and again we provide all the tubes for tubing so okay. no equipment's required for that. 
Okay, so you mentioned before that you do have lessons. Can you tell a little bit more about the lessons that you offer and the different options? You touched on that. Sure. Um, and then the pricing for those as well. Sure. Um, so yeah, kind of different levels. We definitely start off um, with our Snow Kids programs. Um, those are, um, pu again, the publicized and available to view on our website. Our website's villaolivia.com. Okay. Um, we also have part of the Bartlett Park District website, uh, bartlettparks.org. But villaolivia.com, all those lesson programs are available to be viewed there. Uh, Snow Kids is a youth program. Like I said, they'll meet three consecutive sessions. It may be during the holiday session when the kids are out of school. That might be a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in the morning. Once we get beyond that, it's weekends. It could be three consecutive Saturdays, but it's a th set of three. Then we always have walk-on available, walk-on lessons on Friday nights and Saturdays and Sundays, and you can reserve ahead of time private and semi-private okay. lessons. Um, so a, a wide variety. The price points also vary greatly depending on which program. I would really encourage people that are interested to call our facility or to look at the website for pricing. I, I can certainly talk more about some of the lift costs or the rental equipment if you were interested in that. Okay, great. Um, yeah, if you want to talk a little bit about the daily rates mm -hmm. uh, for skiing and tubing and rental, what could a family, say, a family of four expect to spend on a day of tubing? Sure. Tubing is, um, the, our basic price is $20 and that's two hours. Again, it's a very popular activity. So you. Um, receive a lift ticket just like if you were going skiing or snowboarding and it's good for two hours. So okay. our basic non-Bartlett price, non-Bartlett resident price is $20 for two hours on Saturday and Sunday um, from 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. We do discount in the evening. It drops to $17 for a non-resident um, anytime from 5 until 10 p.m whether that be on Thursday night, Friday night or Saturday or Sunday night. So um, it, and then there are some lower youth prices for tubing at all, uh, for tubing as well. Those okay. are the full adult price non-resident. That's the most you would pay would be $20 for two hours. Um, for skiing and snowboarding, a day long pass, we're open from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. It's again, non-resident is $40 all day. Um, an evening, a night slope ticket, which is four till ten, is about twenty. I'm uh, sorry, is about thirty dollars for the okay. lift ticket. Um, rental equipment, skiing, all the skis and poles and boots that you need is around twenty-six dollars okay. for an adult. Uh -huh. And again, it, it drops off. It's less expensive for children. Um, Snowboarding is a little bit more expensive, more like $39, again, for all day long, all the equipment you need, boots, um, the board, a helmet, all of those kind of things, and it drops off for youth and for children. Great. So you're looking at less than $100 per person. Sure. Oh, absolutely. If you needed all the equipment, right, mm -hmm. it might be $70 or $80 for everything you need for the whole day. Wonderful. Thank you. You mentioned your hours, mm -hmm. 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. Right. Are you open during the week at all? Yeah. Um, we are open for skiing and boarding Wednesday through Friday from 5 p.m. to 9.30. Okay. Tubing is Thursday and Friday and then Saturday and Sunday. That sounds awesome. I am really excited about the tubing. That sounds like a really fun activity I can take my daughter to. Absolutely. So is there anything else you'd like to tell us about Villa Olivia that we didn't talk about already today? Well, sure. Um, with the segment that we're doing around fitness and health and activities, um, the Bartlett Park District, um, our tagline is we create fun. But it made me think about your business and that really there are some really good fitness and health benefits to skiing and snowboard. Things like building coordination and flexibility and um, those kind of things as well as cardio cardiovascular. It's a great workout, skiing and snowboarding. Um, and then just the social aspects and the mood elevation and the exhilaration that comes from an out, outdoor sport like that. We think that there's a lot of great benefits for a person's health and wellness. Thank you, Pete, for sharing all this great information about Villa Olivia with us today. That's it for this edition of Fitness Around Town. I'm Jan Silverman of Geneva Fit. Until next time, let's find the fun in fitness. 
At approximately 4 p.m. Monday, King County Sheriff's Office deputies were dispatched to a residence in the 34 West 500 block of Collie Drive, St. Charles Township, for a report of a subject who attempted to rob a 13-year-old girl. The girl was on her way home from a bus stop when the incident allegedly occurred. Kane County Forest Preserve Police, who were in the area, located a subject, Javier Prado, 43, as of 7800 block of South Yates Boulevard, Chicago, matching the description of the offender, and detained him until deputies arrived. The preliminary investigation indicates that while the girl was walking home from her bus stop, Prado allegedly confronted her and told her to give him money, then threw her to the ground and touched her. The girl was able to bite Prado and get away. She ran home and the subject left the scene. Prado was charged with aggravated criminal sexual abuse and class two felony and attempted robbery, a class three felony. He was transported to the Kane County Adult Justice Center. Sophie Lindstrom, a sixth grader at Rotolo Middle School, started Operation Warm Toes last year as a fifth grader at Alice Guffiston Elementary School. Her original goal was to collect 300 pairs of socks for those in need, and she then collected 1,275. All socks were donated to the Batavia Interfaith Closed Closet and Food Pantry. This year, Sophie has expanded her operation by asking all BPS 101 schools to help her collect socks. Every BPS 101 school now has an Operation Warm Toes collection bin, and all sock donations are being accepted at each school until Thursday, December 21st. Anyone can donate new socks to any of these eight Batavia schools and Batavia Park District locations. That's all we have for today, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of It's News to Me. Most of our programming is viewable online at mybatv.com or on YouTube under the username BATV1017. Be sure to like our Facebook page and stay up to date on current happenings. Thanks again for watching. I'm Sophie Sharmazadi, and that's News to Me.